Well, welcome to both of you. So I'm here with Jennifer Dawn Bishop from Gordon Jesus Naganawan Theater and Carol Grayeyes, who is directing Jennifer's new show, uh, Shadow on the Prairies, which will debut at Shakespeare on Saskatchewan this Friday. Uh, so tell us more about this, both of you, welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks. Um, do you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I Jennifer actually originally called me, um, I think in the spring of ooh, 19. 2019 or yeah. 2018 or yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, she said, would you be interested in, in acting or directing my new play? And at that time I was at the university and I, I was very used to saying no um, because my job kept me so busy. <clears throat> However, just as I was about to say no, I said, well, let me read, let me read it first <laughs> before I just say no. And then I read it and I thought, I have to do this play. I will do whatever I need to do in order to make this happen. And so I said, yes, and we were all excited. And it was, we were scouting locations and, um, it was supposed to premiere in the fall of 2019. It was going to be their season opener. Or what? No, 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. 2020. <laughs> and as we know, that that didn't happen. However, I think we all agree, like everybody, uh, the designer that I wanted was not available. Um, I, you know, I had started sending out emails and asking different people and it, it just would not have worked for so many reasons. It was meant to be. Yeah, I, I, I also believe that too. And I think it also gave me time more with, with the script, with the, the characters and the world that they are residing in. And I think it, yeah, it, it gave us that extra time to take more care in, into shadows among the prairies. So yeah, things happen the way that they're supposed to, even when you don't want that to happen, but I'm <laughs> kind of grateful it did turn out this way. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is, um, I really felt strongly that this needed, um, a lot of space because of where it takes place. Can we say where it takes place? I think you, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> well, it it takes place in in the half world. In um, one one of the characters says, "Is this limbo?" <laughs> so whatever you want to call that halfway place, um, where people in Jennifer's imagination go after they die. <laughs> so she's created the void. She's created the void, which is empty. It's only, it only contains these spirits of, of people. And uh, it's a wonderful, it's like the waiting room. Um, it, in a way, it's kind of similar to the play, mm, a little bit, the premise. Of of no exit by by Camus or is it Sard? I think it's Sard. And um, three characters and they they they're sent to this halfway place to process what happened to them in their life. But it's even though it's set in the void <laughs> and there's a lot of conflict and issues that people have to work out. It's a very optimistic play. Um, it's hopeful, it's very hopeful. And um, there's a lot of humor in it, if you can believe it. <laughs> there's a lot of playfulness. And, um, and I think that's really appropriate because um, fear is really our, our 
you know, our, our number one fear of death is our number one fear. And uh, this play kind of, it addresses it, but it kind of takes the, takes some of the sting out of it um, and makes us hopeful that, that um, there's, there's lots of possibilities and, and, and that love never dies. Um, that love is, you know, I said, what is it in the Corinthian, Corinthians 13, the one that's always read at, at, uh, at weddings, um, you know, the, the best of these or the strongest of these is love and, and, um, love endures all things. And, um, and that, that's, it's really hopeful. And, and uh, there's a line in the play where one of the characters says, even the, even the smallest light shines bright in the darkness. And for us at this stage of our human evolution, I think it, that's a wonderful message that even the smallest act of love, of kindness, of forgiveness, generosity will move us forward and uh, and help dispel the darkness. Beautiful. So Jen, tell us a bit about where the idea came, came well, wherever ideas come from. <laughs> but but it, was there an inspiration behind this or a story or? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, this, this particular uh, play was, something that happened after a tragic loss in our, our family with my uh, auntie who was uh, living in Toronto. And it was such a tragic, but also things that happened around that tragedy that just stuck with me. And I, I, I held on to that. There was just something about it where I couldn't just like let it go or couldn't quite heal. And then with my, family my dad because it was him that shared all these um stories about my auntie and her her past and you know the things that she's uh done or uh, which is you know like not always the greatest choices but she was still she was still family uh, we still loved her she was a survivor um but she was still yeah she was she was a human she was a human being and there was just something I, I needed to, yeah, this holding on to something or just kind of giving her uh, a new a new life. And I feel like getting to know her more through the, the story than I had a chance to um, growing up. And, you know, so this is this has been a long journey in, in the making as well as healing storytelling and just keeping keeping her with us but in a in a good way and and I like to think that too that death isn't the end and I feel like you know in this way whatever life she lived that she is doing what she can to overcome the past and we all get a chance at the um, redemption um so yeah, there's a, definitely a lot of things that inspired the story, but it was, yeah, from, from her and the stories that my dad shared, shared about it as well. Awesome. So was that, was that to, 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 to write from kind of a place of like family and, and, um, yeah, yeah, very much family and just that instant of, you know, like, that even though she was all the way in Ontario, my dad was in Saskatchewan, that there was still that connection and knowing that something w was wrong before we even found out about the news. So that was, that was also something that was significant that really held meaning to, to this story. Hmm. So when did you start writing it? How long did it take? How long did the process take? Um, well, it took place shortly after uh, 
2012. And I think, um, I can't remember the exact date, but it was always something that stuck with me. And then I kind of just woke up uh, in the middle of the night because things started to, I started getting clear images and this need to write this story. So I wrote the first super rough draft in three days and I couldn't stop until it was completed and I let it sit there. So I think by the time any eyes got to see it was back in 2017. So it's been, yeah, it's been a, a story that felt like it should never have been rushed. And uh, well, aside from that first draft, but the aftercare of it needed to have its own journey. So yeah, I'd say like five, just a little over five years. Uh, of this. Wow. So, so Carol, can you tell us uh, some of the, a bit more about like the actors and the story and the challenges that you've had in these COVID times trying to put this all together and. <laughs> well, <clears throat> like Jen said, it's been a, it's been a long process. Um, <clears throat> me personally, um, I think through two or three workshops we've done on Zoom. And then we did a we did a reading on Zoom. And we did our auditions on Zoom, which is kind of funny because I had no idea about people's sizes. So we had to keep asking, how tall are you? You know. <laughs> It, it it's it's very difficult and when the actors were actually in the room it was a whole it was like they were somebody else <laughs> and um and and i think you know there are some good things and there are some bad things about about virtual auditioning um and the actors have themselves have just talked about how they feel like they are they've discovered their bodies it feels like the first play that they've ever done uh that that they're just starting out in theater even if they've been doing you know lots and lots and lots of shows uh, I think the pandemic really did a number on us all. So, um, but so grateful. We're so grateful and happy to be in the room with somebody. Um, it just makes a huge difference. Um, but now we've got all these layers upon layers of COVID protocol and things that we have to work out. We're working out sound levels. So we have to ask the masks to come down so we can compare and hear and um, it, it theater people are very adaptable and they're very resilient and um, we're just trying to stay positive and stay strong. Um, this cast is very supportive of one another and the entire, the organization is holding us. Um, the, the designers, everybody is, um, is just doing such wonderful work and being so generous. And I, I keep saying to people, it's already a victory. This is a victory. Just this day, being here with one another and being, having the privilege um, we were working late at night, uh, you know, it was around midnight, working on um, technical things. And um, it, we, we ran into a, a glitch with computers, of course. And um, Carla, our lighting designer and set designer just said, this is nothing. There are people with far bigger problems than we have. We're making art. And to me, that was just such a, mm, just, it, it was a, 
<laughs> kind of a slap up the side of the head, like we are so privileged that we are able to be doing this um, and working, um, working on a play about death and and struggles. Um, and I, I think as Jen or somebody said, I mean, it is very, very healing. Um, the, the play, we're, we're actually cycling through all the, 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 the phases of grief. You know, anger, resentment, denial, uh, bargaining. And, and we do, we get to acceptance. Um, some of the characters do. They get to they get to acceptance, and um, I, I think that's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful parable or that you've written, Jen. That I'm I'm thinking of it like a parable. Mm -hmm. It's the story. It's it's many people's story, but it's kind of it's your aunt's story, but it's. A universal story because <laughs> we have elements of all of those three characters <laughs> mm -hmm. as you have said in the past it's very real characters but in an unreal world and an absolutely you know, universal feelings or situations like this been there. you've definitely been a part of of this giant world that none of us has ever been to. So navigating and helping these characters' journeys has been a whole thing of its own. So I, I've been so grateful to Carol and the actors and every single person that has been with me along the way, even if it was just that one 15 minute meeting along the way in this journey has stayed with me. And I'm just grateful that it's going to see life in the afterlife this week. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like everybody's watching over us every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we're, we're on the river, Kisi Skatchewani CP. We're right beside the river. And and we wouldn't have been here if we had. Well, maybe I don't think the venue would have been ready. Last year, last fall, so it's good timing, but you know now we're in in the fourth wave so. it's. we're staying positive. But it's it's amazing that it's an outdoor theater, right? So you're you're able to have live audiences pretty safely, I would think. Hey, like what is the maximum size in that theater? I mean, the venue it is a four hundred seat venue, but we are cutting that in half and also still allowing social distancing and following the health uh, protocols. So, yeah. It, it, so less than that, for sure, just to be on the safe side and keep our audience and our actors safe. Um, and it's not really outdoors, although, you know, on a day like today when it's windy, you can, the tents, you can hear the wind outside. I mean, it isn't going like this, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that it's really exciting, though, because we can feel we can feel the outdoors it's it's not a it's not necessarily a black box and there is space which was to me really crucial for giving an audience the experience of being in the void and and that kind of weird dislocation where are we um yeah that the characters experience. <laughs> so we wanted to have that experience too with the, with the audience. However, whoever came up with the idea of building a theater across from the, the helipad at the children's hospital 
and a hospital, the city hospital. So you hear sirens and you hear helicopters. Maybe if we were doing um, Miss Saigon, <laughs> just, <laughs> um, but it, it's, um, yeah, I feel very privileged actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also gives you a sense of, if you look at it in a different way, like of actual humanity, being within arm's reach, but never actually getting. Yeah, yeah, they're there, but you can't reach them. <laughs> you can't break through the veil. Yeah. You can't break through the the tent walls. Or that'd be a very big damage bill. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we've been having a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. We've had to, um, um, I, I, I am feeling so wonderful to be able to do this play for Gordon Tatusis Naganawan Theater because uh, Jennifer and Ed and everybody has made it a very culturally safe place um, for us all. And uh, I really, really value that and appreciate that. Um, so we're really lucky that that the theater is is here in this city. Yeah, it's it's a it's a teaching tool, but it's also um, a safe place for Indigenous artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an important legacy and it just keeps giving. It's a real yeah. cultural jewel. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you don't have to be Indigenous to come to our play, but um, I, I think certainly um, it is informative about the reality of an Indigenous life yeah. and what people go through. You know, so it's a, it's teaching, but it's also sharing. Mm -hmm. so and entertaining and fun and hopeful. So everybody should come. Everyone should come. How long is it running for? It starts, it opens Friday. It opens Friday, closes on the 18th, but September 9th is our preview discount night. Uh, so yeah, so the 9th until the 18th. Okay, awesome. So it's Thursday. And then how, how do people get tickets? Do they just show up? Do they book ahead? Oh, they can book ahead at the gtnt.ca. Um, and I believe they, there will be someone on site too if they need to go uh, in person. But if they want to get advanced seats and they can pick wherever they'd like to sit, then that is a good message. Yeah, you can book online. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Oh. Which is seems to be the the way people do it now. I mean, it's just our new our brave new world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we are uh, doing um, a digital version or a digital. Mm -hmm. We are filming it, mm -hmm. so that will be um, available. Mm, we're thinking early November. So if you missed it live, I mean, there's nothing like live. Yeah. The whole pandemic has shown us that, but um, this means that GTNT can reach people all over the world, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, it won't be, you know, if you don't get to see it um, live, you can see the next best thing, which will be a film. Awesome. And and we have just like a couple of minutes left, but just tell us a few things about maybe um, the story or the characters or the actors or that kind of thing. What can people expect? Go, go Jen. Go Jen. Well, definitely different time eras. Uh, although they are in a place of uh, endless time. So it was really fun uh, writing and doing the work into what these folks were like during the 1930s, 1980s, and contemporary time, and just doing it. Well, they wouldn't talk about this, uh, but they would do this, or just 
misconstrue uh, an innocent word and thinking it some, as something else when you say it out loud. It's like, oh, dear, that's not what that means. So, <laughs> but there's also hilarity, friendship, uh, family, and just, yeah, shared shared emotions. So there's a lot to be said about these characters, but there's definitely fun to be had with uh, what time era they were in. And so how many actors are in the crew all together? How, how big is it? Three. Three, wow, okay. Yeah, three characters. Um, we've, got our, we've got our trinity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, different, different perspectives, different life experiences. Um, so we get, um, we don't just get one person's uh, storyline. We get we get three, which really, when they're woven together, really helps. Um, it's about connection, and 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 I I I just realized that that maybe Jen, that's your that's your hope, your wishful thinking that that there is that connection is never lost that um, we talked about um, two of the characters, well, maybe all three, having soul contracts where they, the, they were, it was all agreed ahead of time that this is gonna happen. And, um, and then they just, they just lived out those, those storylines, but they never mm, broke the contract. It might have seemed like they broke the contract by leaving this this 3D kind of existence, but it it was always there and always will be there. I think that's uh, one of the characters says, "Well, I'll I'll find you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll I'll find you. You may be going to a different place, but I'll I'll find you." And and the do the characters do uh, uh, one of the characters is found, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you have to come and see the play to find out any more. That sounds good. That sounds good. It sounds awesome. So that is that is Shadows Among the Prairie. This has been. Jennifer Dawn Bishop and Carol Gray is sharing a little bit about this play that's coming up. It'll be playing on Shakespeare and the Saskatchewan. You can get tickets at gtnt.ca. And uh, we hope to see you there. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. So thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you.